is Radio Broccoli. Hello and welcome to Broccoli News, Radio Broccoli's weekly show keeping you up to date with all you need to know about what's happening in and around the hospital. I'm Alan Joyce and coming up today we'll be hearing about a very special fundraiser who this week presented his cheque to the Cox Ward and Adolescent Unit. And we'll also be getting our Therapy of the Month update from the Disability Foundation. Uh, this month we're looking at acupuncture. Then at 7.30 your chance to win some Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving your bed on Bedside Bingo with David Rouch. Good luck if you're playing along. The patient rep should be with you very shortly. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, it's all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show with Keith Reeve. So stay tuned to London's longest-running hospital radio station and officially number one in London, number two in the UK. It's Radio Broccoli. So first tonight we hear about a presentation which took place in the hospital earlier this week on the Coxon Ward and Adolescent Unit. So let's join our reporter Graham Rich who was there on the ward to tell us more. It's Tuesday the 21st of April 2015. It's Graham on the Coxon Ward here and I've just witnessed a very important handover of special funds donated by a very generous dad, that's Wesley Crane, because he has taken part in a special kickboxing event to raise funds for the Coxon Ward here and uh, a witness event today and the nurses have very gratefully received funds raised so it's good afternoon to Wesley Crane hello there hello there how are you doing yeah not bad you I'm I'm bearing up thank you it's a beautiful day out there and and today's kind of special as well because you have handed over um, some funds to the ward sister and other nurses as a thank you for something very special. Tell us a bit more about your sport that you participated in. Well, it's basically a K1 kickboxing event. Just, uh, just for three five minute rounds. Sort of, um, just, well, did did that uh, kickboxing event to raise some money for the ward, so. That's awesome, that's fantastic. And uh, your daughter is here today. Yeah. This is, uh, oh, she looks a bit shy actually now. <laughs> this is Izzy. Tell, tell me something about Izzy. Well, she's my daughter. <laughs> no, it's, well, she's like been through a lot, quite a lot in her life. She's only young, and uh, well, I don't know. This hospital sorted her out basically. That's why I wanted to donate some money. But That's very good of you. Yeah. Indeed, the hospital is a, a centre of excellence for all kind of uh, bone and skeletal work. Yeah. And what part of the country are you from? Uh, Hemel Hempstead. Oh, Hemel. So yeah, that's yeah. Hertfordshire. Yeah, Hertfordshire. Yeah. And how long did the kickboxing go for? What, the event? or How long did it last for? I just, well, the event was six hours, and there was uh, 20 fights there. So. That's... And did you get a lot of sponsorship? Yeah, yeah, lots of people donated. Like, I got money for well, ticket sales, and like, everyone from my gym donated something. So that's it. Do you need to be very fit to do kickboxing? Yeah, yeah. Did. A lot of training? Yeah, hell of a lot of training, yeah. But, but Tell me something more about the sport. Does it originate from the Far East? Yeah, it does, yeah. From uh, J- Japan, I'm led to believe. I think it's from there. Uh, everyone uh, does it all around the world. Like Every country's got their own K1 fighters. Uh, but and it's a form of self-defence? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. And is the treatment, is the work over now for Izzy, or will she have to come back? No, it's over now. She still has to have scans every like couple of months. No, every couple of weeks. But touch wood, then she's all right now. So hopefully that's the end of it. Fingers crossed it's all over with. Yeah. But maybe maybe you'll come in during the afternoon or morning for those scans? Yeah, I will probably, yeah, definitely. I was just wondering, because uh, if you're here on a Sunday, we can play bingo again. <laughs> yeah, lovely. I might join in with that. <laughs> it could be fun. It could be fun. Um... Do you think uh, Mum, stepmom, would like to say a word? Yep. <laughs> yeah, she'd love to say a word. Come on. <laughs> okay, okay. Hello. Y- your name is again? Hello, my name's Hannah. Hannah, pleased to meet you. And you. Today's a very special day. It is. And we're all proud of Wesley and Izzy and all the staff of the hospital for giving um, Izzy the best treatment. Very happy. Thank you. It's a great hospital, isn't it? It is. It's a fantastic hospital. Maybe Izzy could say a word. Do you, do, do you think we shall push it a bit? And s- Izzy, come on. Just come and say thank you. Come on, come on. <laughs> I think she's terribly shy. Actually, hiding behind a wall doesn't really help, does it? <laughs> no. 
Well, I remember Izzy in February, and we had a lot of fun during Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. We played the bingo, and I tried to help her join in, but I don't think we won a prize. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Well, Izzy, I know, I know you're a bit shy just to say, hope all goes well for you. Say thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a bit, a bit young for this, I think. Yeah. And just, well, uh, Wesley, to yourself and to Hannah, many thanks indeed for agreeing to give this interview. And hope all goes well for you and especially for Izzy as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much like indeed. It. Thank you, thanks. Cheers, bye. This is Broccoli News, and don't forget still to come this evening in just about 15 minutes' time, actually, your chance to win some goodies without leaving your bed on Bedside Bingo with uh, David Rouch calling out the numbers. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, for a whole two hours, it's the Sunday Request Show and Keith Reeve in the hot seat. And finally tonight, it's time for our regular Therapy of the Month update from the Disability Foundation, a charity based here in the hospital who provide complimentary therapies to patients, staff and visitors. Let's find out about this month's therapy as well as more about uh, TDF with our reporter, Sue Weston. My name's Sue Weston and I'm here now with Ronnie Broder from TDF and we're going to talk about the monthly therapies that are going on and also we're going to talk a bit about what TDF actually stands for. So Ronnie, could you just tell us a bit more about it? Yes, of course. Um, TDF is um, a charity organisation that is uh, running the complementary therapy department at the uh, Stanmore Orthopaedic Hospital. Um, it's located at the back of the hospital in one of the little huts and um, there's a host of complementary therapies available. Um, you need to be a member so you join as a membership and you pay quite a nominal fee as a membership um, and it's available to absolutely anyone which is uh, slightly different to what the actual name stands for, which is the Disability Foundation. So what therapies do TDF provide? OK, um, I'm an acupuncturist and um, we now offer acupuncture um, four days um, or four slots during the week. Uh, there's uh, lots of different massage therapies going on including Indian head massage and sports remedial massages, aromatherapy and um, uh, osteopathy, reflexology, Reiki, hypnotherapy, um, craniosacral therapy, and there's, um, there's also um, um, a chiropody, which will be offered very shortly. That's great. And um, it's uh, at the back of the hospital, you say, up by the clock tower, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah. And um, it's completely accessible for um, wheelchairs as well. It is. It? There's a car park that's uh, right outside and um, now there's a lovely new banner at the front of the building to tell everyone where we are. Oh, that's brilliant. And as you said, it's it's... These therapies are available for even patients in the hospital? Absolutely, yes. Um, we would be able to see uh, patients who are uh, outpatients of the hospital, um, their carers. It's, it's pretty much open to uh, the community as a whole. It sounds absolutely fantastic. So it sounds like you know this sort of treatment is really beneficial for people, especially people that are getting over an operation or treatment. Um, how do they come to see you? What what would be the, if if I'm listening to this now? How would I come and find out where you are and how to book in and pay my fee, which is about twenty five pounds, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you uh, actually there's a website. So uh, if you go to www.tdf.org.uk, or you can telephone and they give you the information that you need, and uh, the number is o two o eight nine five four. 7373. Seven, That's great. So so now I'd like to find out a bit m more about the treatment that you provide. So you're an acupuncturist. Yes. And um, and so how does that, what, what, what sort of things do you do and how does that work? How does it work? Okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, I just want to tell people that um, 
uh, I studied at a university degree level um, and uh, part of the degree is that we learn as much about Western medicine as, as we do about Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine dates back to over 2,000 years. It's a, a proven therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's lots of evidence-based uh, studies that have been done to actually um, prove that acupuncture is helpful in many, many conditions. Um, and, and what does the treatment entail? Okay, so uh, acupuncture itself is um, inserting very, very fine needles into acupuncture points along the body. So you have, um, the Chinese believe that we have like an invisible meridian system all over the body. And uh, if, if I can explain it in a much easier way, uh, if you can visualize the tube map and there's lots of different colored lines and you have tube stops and you've got the beginning of the line and the end of the line and tube stops all along the line. So each line represents a different organ. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the central line is the red line, it would represent the heart line, and the green line would be the liver line, and the lung would be the blue line, etc. cetera. Um, we would access different points along that line, and um, every now and then there's a central station, and those central stations would access different lines, just like if you get to Victoria Station or St Pancras and you can access different lines. So the analogy would be, if you had a headache and you came to me, it would mean that there's what we call stagnation or something that's blocking um, the energy flow in that line or in more than one line. Mm -hmm. So it's Again, going back to the analogy of the train and the yes. station, it means that there's a train stuck somewhere in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So um, what we do is we wouldn't necessarily put a needle in your head to cure the headache, but we would go to the end of the line, so put a needle somewhere in your foot, mm -hmm. and that will blow the energy yes. and actually help move the train out yes. of the tunnel. Yes thereby releasing the headache. It, it sounds absolutely amazing. I have actually had um, treatment like this and I've experienced like tingling down my legs and my arms and I find it to be really, really therapeutic. I must say, really helped with the issue that I had. It yeah. is, it's actually a very gentle therapy and it's very holistic. We look at um, the body, the mind, the spirit. We generally believe that if there is a dysfunction or a disharmony, that it's it's about what else is going on. Right. Okay. So we treat the whole of the person. It's not just where the pain is. Yes. And they can come and have one-to-one -one sessions, can't they? Yes. Um, we have um, therapists there uh, three days a, w a week, um, and you can book in for a one-to-one -one session. And um, we've also started a seated acupuncture group. And, uh, and it is exactly what it is. It means that you're in a room with some chairs around there. And um, you, you come, you sit down. Um, the therapist comes to you and talks to you privately about your condition. And then we decide on a treatment protocol. Mm -hmm. and then uh, we give you the treatment and it's a very relaxing therapy very often you just actually nod off or just find it very very relaxing yes and um, it's very helpful for as I said many many conditions that's right so that sounds really really it sounds interesting and the group one sounds interesting too to me so does it does it is it is it more cost effective to do it that way or well it is i mean firstly as a member of tdf you actually make a suggested donation so even if you were having a one-to-one -one treatment it didn't really matter what it 
was. So if you were having massage or Reiki or whatever, there's there's a there's a suggested donation. So you would mm -hmm. give that, uh, which is probably less than half the prices that you would co that you would be charged outside of of this environment. Um, the seated acupuncture is less expensive than the one to one session, so it's more affordable, and um, patients find it more suitable because they can they can drop in more often right. because we deal with more than one patient yes, yes. It, there's, there's always availab availability for for appointments that sounds great I, I might be visiting you <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so looking forward to seeing you there so what sort of conditions would people have that that you could help them with well there's uh, a list really a huge list from A to Z um, and um, uh, I'm a British acupuncture council member so that's our governing bo body and if you go onto their website which is um, www.acupuncture.org.uk and you go onto the list of conditions um, you can click on each one of those and it will give you research-based evidences of how it works but the list is endless it's anything from anxiety to stress pain management um, fatigue insomnia um, gastrointestinal conditions asthma back pain <laughs> knee pain which we see all the time um, neurological conditions as well so yes. Uh, it really does go across the board. And also, so you mentioned anxiety. I'm just thinking now, you know, when I, before I, I did, I, I've experienced it myself and it, and it was not frightening in any way to me in the end. But at the time I was thinking, what is it going to be like? So, you know, ha, if, what would you say to people about having needles? What, what well, firstly, um, I've, I must explain that they're very, very fine needles. It's nothing like a, uh, an ordinary needle that anyone would think about. They're, they're almost hair-like. Hair mm -hmm. um, and this, sometimes you just don't even feel them going in. It's very, very gentle. Sometimes we do simulate the points so that you can feel a tingling or an ache or some kind of sen moving sensation in the body. Um, and mostly I find that it's the men who are more wary of acupuncture and mm -hmm. actually once they've had it they oh I didn't know what I was worried about yes. you know yes. um, and the benefit has really outweighed you know their anxiety That's so it's great. a very gentle treatment and actually it's incredibly relaxing lovely lovely so if you're listening to this now and you'd like to get in touch I'll just give you the phone number again which is 020 7373 and the website to look up anything you want to know as well is www.tdf.org.uk and I've been speaking to Ronit Broder thank you very much for your time thank you very uh, I look much. forward to seeing you soon <laughs> Thanks a lot. How would you like to support the RNOH and enjoy an evening of live classical music? On Monday the 11th of May, the Queen Elizabeth Hall at the South Bank Centre will be hosting a special night of classical music with the London Festival Orchestra. The evening is a tribute to ex-patient Ross Popel and features a special guest appearance by Sir Andres Schiff. This special concert starts at 7pm and tickets start from £12 with a special 20% discount for the Friends of the RNOH for tickets over £35. Just quote RNOH when booking your seat. To book your tickets, call the box office on 0844 847 9910. That's 0844 847 9910. Or you can book online at southbankcentre.co.uk. So come and support the RNOH at the South Bank Centre on Monday the 11th of May at 7pm with the London Festival Orchestra. This is Radio Broccoli.
Yeah, do support that cause and what a fascinating interview before about uh, acupuncture as well from Ronita. Brilliantly explained actually uh, using the comparison of the tube mats. Perhaps it's because I work in travel news, I don't know, but I've never heard it explained quite that clearly before. If you want to find out more about the Disability Foundation and the superb work that they do, you can go to their website at tdf.org.uk and also in the next couple of weeks here on Broccoli News we'll be hearing about uh, one of their open evenings uh, that uh, happened here in the hospital. And don't forget you can listen again to Broccoli News by following the links from our website at radiobroccoli.org. You can listen to it on our YouTube channel. Plus, you can catch Broccoli News Extra five days a week at midday for another chance to hear some of our recent interviews. Up next on Radio Broccoli, it's Bedside Bingo, your chance to win some Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving your bed with David Rouch. And then it's the Sunday Request Show at 8 o'clock tonight with Keith Reeve. Broccoli News returns at the same time next week from me, Alan Joyce, though. Goodbye. (music) 